everyone. Thank you for joining us. Hi, hi. This is Congresswoman Elhan Omar. We're uh, in um, the northern part of Minnesota, uh, here at where the Line 3 um, pipeline is about to go into. And we're here visiting um, because it is going to be really important for people to raise their voice. Uh, there's still an opportunity for us to stop. Um, we know that uh, you know our our governor has the ability to do something, um, but has chosen not to. And um, Biden, at the moment, um, has taken action on some of the pipelines across the country, and we are urging him uh, to take action in regards to this one because he does have that that ability. Uh, but I wanted for you all to get an opportunity to hear um, from indigenous folks um, on this land on why it is important for us to protect the wetlands, why it's important for us to think about what livelihood in regards to wild rice means, what it means for us to stand up in solidarity uh, as we protect um, and fulfill treaty rights. Uh, what it means for us as Minnesotans to, to recognize um, we have to stand together uh, and make sure that our brothers and sisters um, have their, their lives and their culture and their livelihoods intact. Uh, and so I'll turn it over to Tara to share a little bit more on why this is important. Uh, I always appreciate uh, your your voice and your actions and your consistent support for so many different groups of folks who are trying to be heard. Um, so we're here at the beginnings of the Mississippi River. As you can see, it's very, very small, um, just in between these two banks. Um, so it comes that giant river down south uh, in Minneapolis and all the way down to uh, the Gulf. Oh, and uh, you know, it's it's really hard to be in a situation in which we're looking at this beautiful place and thinking about the fact that our governor has chosen to support or at least tacitly allow um, a tar sands project, one of the biggest tar sands infrastructure projects in North America to come here, to go right through this beautiful place. Um, line three is a 10% expansion of the tar sands. Line three is 50 coal fire plants in, in emission. Line three is a violation of indigenous territory and indigenous rights. It's a perpetuation of cultural genocide. And that's why we're here trying to stop this. Mm -hmm. We can stop this. Um, you know, at this point, there's been almost 100 people arrested in just the last month uh, since the construction of this pipeline project has begun. People are coming out in a pandemic. People are willing to take risks because this has to stop. And it's been mostly young people leading this. Uh, young people and the people of this territory that are willing to put themselves in line and we're asking Biden if our own governor won't lead us obviously there's there's some separations within the state not just our representatives but also our own uh, you know attorney general is representing Department of Commerce Minnesota's Department of Commerce that's suing the Public Utility Commission for approving this project without being able to prove the need so there's, there's major disagreements. Lieutenant Governor Flanagan has said she's against line three even now. Um, you know, we need we need action. Biden just canceled Keith and XL, so it's time to do line three. Yeah. Serious intervention <coughs> is needed. So. so we'd like to have Dawn Goodwin. Yeah. Have you met her yet? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I was advised to give this to you. Um, I was one of our elected officials. Okay. And Peter. And this is the reminder of um, our treaties and our people and uh, what we are facing. Uh, and also, the sister Shadow, this is sponsoring mm. uh, our Mississippi. And we gather that in responsibility. Like, and um, as we walk out here, we would find some of Did you, did you want to share anything about why we should mm -hmm. uh, stop mindfully? Uh, yes. Um, 
Uju, Gage Geyashi, Nindishnikaz, Gawa Babi Ganikad, and Dunjaba. My name is uh, Everlasting Wind. My English name is Don Goodwin, and I, I live here. Uh, my home is 13 miles away. My people live here. This is where we come for our solitude, our prayers. These are our lands. We come here to gather medicine, to fish and hunt gather berries. So we're very much a living culture. And we are connected to this land. And I want to share a little bit about our uh, migration story. At one time, the Anishinaabe lived on the East Coast. Mm. And they were told that they needed to leave her because invaders were coming. And if we didn't leave that we would perish. Some left and some stayed. Some followed that, those prophecies. And they were told to go where the land, where the uh, food grew out of the water. Some say on the water, but I've been told out of the water as we examine our, our language. It says that it's food that grows out of the water. So we were told to come to the, the place where the food grows out of the water. Mm. And that is where we are at. That food is monomen. It is a sacred gift from the creator. And as Anishinaabe, we've been told, you take care of the monomen, you take care of the nibi, and they will take care of us. As you all may know, monomen is a state brain. It is a superfood. So that is why our people are here. Mm. And that is why our people will protect mm. Monomen and Nibi and our people and our lands mm. and our medicines mm. and our <laughs> animals. <laughs> and that is a promise because we are told to do so. The Creator knows this and he has ensured that our relatives have passed this on to us and so we are still here and we will protect our lands and our people and our all our sacred gifts from the creator miigwech What I said is, my name is Wabaganakwe. Uh, my family is from Lakota Ray Reservation in Wisconsin, and I'm Kling Kling. Um, <clears throat> stopping on line three means protecting our hunting and fishing rights and our rights to the sugar bush. Um, these are culture practices that I've just begun to, you know, be a part of because of how assimilation tactics were so effective on my family. And if we don't stop line three, I fear that I won't be able to continue doing these things and my children will. Um, she knew which congresswoman for being here. It shows that there's still some people in power that Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. This too is my family's an ancestral home. And not far from here is where I spend my, my time during the summer where I meditate, I think about, uh, collect our herbs, all that can be destroyed if we're not careful with how we treat our earth. And it's devastating to know that our water will be affected, that our, our, uh, our plants and our, the energy around us is going being changed by technology. So I thank you too, Congresswoman, for being here because it means a great deal to understand the time, place, and space of indigenous people and how we see you know, the earth and honor everything that's here. 
And that is who we are. Me, you, Miguel. Me, me. Who's you in this entire journey for attacking First Nations for where I'm from? Um, I would just like to thank you for coming up and, and doing and seeing what, what, uh, what we're up against. What we've been fighting for eight years now, seven years, something seven like that. Years. Mm -hmm. Seven years. Many meetings. I know more about pipelines than I, I want to. <laughs> 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 and um, I just really worry about the missing, the epidemic of the MMI, the missing and murdered Indigenous women epidemic. Mm -hmm. And we're, I'm really worried for our families here, you know, well, everywhere, you know, and it's happening up, you know, up where the tar sands is. And, um, my, that's where my mom is from and my father is up back there, so. Kind of a battle, kind of like everywhere I turn, you know, that's just so traumatic all the time. There's really no time to really enjoy life, a good life, because you know what, I'm not going to have that. Because you know, I'm always doing something like this, you know, and I was told what I was going to be when I got older. And, and, and here we are. I would like to see things done in protection of our lands and our people <coughs> and our futures, just like it says in their big book. And in the first paragraph of that book, it says to do so. And in between all that is all their stuff. And then at the very end, in that book of that Revelations, it states, you know, what happens to you if you don't do that? Hey! Take care of us. Well, thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the most that anyone's ever been down this road, besides us yeah. and sheriffs. <laughs> Nobody really comes. You know, everybody's like, no, no, no. everybody freaks out every time we see a car. Um, but I, I, I feel honored um, to to join you all here, and uh, and I, I just want to let you all know. You know, I stand in solidarity um, as you all work to protect the earth um, and to honor the earth and to protect water uh, and life um, and the cultural preservations that you all are fighting for. Uh, and it is um, important that we recognize, right? Like, Enrich has strong and powerful lobbyists. Um, and in order for us to, to combat uh, that, we're going to need strong solidarity with one another as Minnesotans um, to, to be able to uh, reach our governor um, and make sure that there is an understanding that this is a moral imperative for him to do the right thing. Um, and it's going to be a moral imperative for the President of the United States to do uh, something and so we'll continue fighting uh, and uh, thank you all for having me. Mm. I think I can, like, listening to the ducks as you're talking.